Okay, we're back. We're live in the military in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we're talking about the uh, the regatta. And uh, if you're wondering what regatta, you know, we've got regattas all the time, actually. Um, talking about regatta, we're talking about the no, no, Nakoa Wounded Warrior Regatta uh, with Ben Lugfar and uh, Paul Lequier. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thanks so, so much, uh, Jay. Glad to be here. When, when is the regatta, uh, Ben? When is it and where is it and what and what, what can we you know know about it and how can we get our boat into it? Yeah, absolutely. The canoe regatta actually just occurred on the 27th of August, and it's an annual event that we've had uh, since about 2008. I'm sure you remember Judge Ed Kubo from his time here in Hawaii, but he kind of kind of kicked it off as an event to support Wounded Wars and um, in veterans. So we're planning on another event. This will be like year 13 uh, outside the Holly Co Hotel. I don't have, Paul, you might have the specific date, but it's it's in the later part of August where we've got a website that, that is actually live now that will link to the event. And we'll talk more about it throughout the show, but thank you, Jay. Yeah. Uh, and Paul, you're in you're in Florida right now. What, what are, are we having a, a sympathetic regatta in Florida? <laughs> I wish it was that that nice over here. No, our, our beaches in Hawaii are far superior for regatta, uh, you know, races. But no, I'm here on business, working with the Army and the Navy, and uh, we'll be up in uh, D.C. with Ben in about uh, a week, a couple of weeks. So just business related. Mm, okay. So um, I, this is a silly question. I hope you forgive me for this question. Uh, ben, what is a regatta? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, most people know about regatta if you're here in Hawaii, but we really believe that the the healing of the waters in Hawaii is just a, such a special event. And we tied literally a canoe race, we call or label under the regatta. It's part of Duke's Ocean Fest. It's really the first event that occurs throughout the year. And it's just a, a great event on the beach with a whole bunch of veterans and support and wounded warriors and community partners and people cheering on uh, members who are actually racing inside the canoe outside the Holly Cola Hotel. Oh, great. And um, what is NACOA, uh, Paul? Can you tell us what NACOA is as an organization? And what is its connection with the military? Yeah. Uh, the NACOA is, is the name that the regatta uh, uh, organization took. It, it's a warrior. The regatta is a, a, a canoe. So it's it's that spirit of warriors coming together. And then you look at lifting up the canoe, right, and, and moving it forward in synchronization of working together on the ocean uh, to, to move forward. And that started through the efforts that you heard from, from uh, Colonel Luke Farr uh, years ago. And it symbolizes that that spirit of collaboration on the ocean. Uh, and then of course the healing powers and the, the, the Hawaiian oceans are just known for just bringing people back to that peacefulness of being in, in, in connection with the, with the ocean. Colonel is it then, Ben? Um, do you mind well, if I still call you Ben? You can call me Luke. You can call me Ben. You can call me whatever you like this this afternoon or this morning. <laughs> Are you an Army <laughs> Colonel? I was a ret I'm a retired Army Colonel. Spent 30 years with the Army. So th this regatta has uh, its primary military connection is with the Army. Am I right? It is truly a joint event, and it's really not necessarily just service specific. But everyone who has an issue as it relates to, you know, wounded warrior in some capacity, it's just not about veterans, but it's also with our local community. It really ties back to the Hawaiian ancestry of uh, the outrigger canoe paddling, and it just continues to be a powerful legacy of healing and just uh, getting everyone together here in Hawaii to recognize what's occurred over the history of Hawaii, but also tie into our wounded warriors and our veterans. Oh, that's great. Um, so it's cultural and it's uh, ho'oponopono in the sense of uh, trying to heal people from um, very unpleasant um, PTSD kind of experiences. Huh? Yeah. Absolutely. And it, like I said, it goes back to uh, Judge Kubo in 2008, also with the Lieutenant Colonel Retired Gervin uh, Miyamoto. They pursued the concept of creating a canoe regatta for wounded warriors and veterans. And then they reached out to the Honolulu Pearl Canoe Club through Major Penny Clue at the time. 
and also members of the Navy Pearl Harbor MWR program, the Morale Welfare and Recreation Program. And that's where the idea really began. It's really grown from about 60 canoes in the paddle racing and competing to where we were over 100 canoes at, at one point. Uh, we haven't done it for a couple of years, obviously due to COVID and having large gatherings. But it, like I said earlier, it's just such a healing event. Uh, and the true VIPs are the are the wounded warriors and the veterans, not necessarily the colonels and the generals and the admirals that come or the dignitaries that come from the local uh, community. So do uh, do the wounded warriors, are they able to participate uh, in, in the canoes? Um, are they competitors? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. Absolutely. We've got, we've got both a VIP heat and we've had a grand marshal for years and Sometimes there are double amputees or triple amputees. We had, we had once we had Gray Gats and retired Colonel um, so lost both of his legs during an Iraqi event. And the canoes and the Pearl Club teams they have the right kinds of mechanisms to put everybody in the water, uh, you know, with their families and you know with their kids to be able to, again, just the special healing of a why they really enjoy being in the regatta and everyone's a winner regardless of what time you may have at the finish but we had we had one special uh paddler uh one of our grand marshals who said i don't have much movement with my hands but if you velcro them to the paddle i'm all in so oh, wow. <laughs> we actually spent some time getting him in the water and it, again it was just so neat to see him you know be part of the, the regatta itself so, Paul, is is there a fundraising element um, to the regatta? Are you able to raise money, you know, uh, within the auspices of the regatta? And if so, what what do you do with the money? Well, yeah, let me just add one thing to what Luke had said. Also, is we also recognize our Gold Star family members, uh, families, and they su they are supported by having uh, both canoes in the water, and we recognize them because they've given up their ultimate sacrifice of a member of their family who's been lost. Uh, through a uh, battle or, or some type of engagement. So we recognize all our Gold Star family members as well from Hawaii. And as far as our fundraising, now, uh, Hawaii Association of the United States Army, which we are merely the, the host of the regatta. It's under the auspice of NACO, NACO, the NACOA organization that started, with, as Luke said. We don't do specific fundraising for this event. We have our community partners, which represent everybody in the community in Honolulu, who are part of the Association of the United States Army will become members of the Association of the United States Army. And our funds in, that we collect throughout the year through donations and whatnot are go to support this event. We don't do a specific fundraiser for this event. We host it, we put it on through our general operating fund rather than making this a fundraiser because we're not there to make money. We're there to provide the service of letting the healing powers of the water and this camaraderie of the all branches of the military. We don't just look at Army, even though we're the Association of the United States Army, we have paddlers and, and contestants from all branches of service and all family members and veterans, combat, wounded, retirees, all compete. And we go across the, the gamut, all, all of our six services, including the Guard and Reserve. So we don't use it as a fundraiser. We certainly open to donations. You can link that anytime you want on your on your site, but we are, we are a nonprofit. We don't go out and seek donations specifically for an event. We ask, do you want to support our military in the state of Hawaii, specifically the Army Association? And in this case, the regatta, just go ahead and make a donation. We'll make sure it gets taken care of. What about the individual people, the families, for example, the wounded? Do you have direct contact with them outside the regatta, or is it is it yeah. simply preparing for and organizing and uh, executing the, the regatta? Uh, ben, can you answer that? Yeah, I can. In fact, there are some great organizations that all the services have supporting supporting Gold Star family members. And if you're not familiar with what that means, is, as Paul talked about, it's it's a, an individual who has lost uh, either you know, a mom or a dad or a brother or a sister in, in some family connection in combat or in some time uh, while their service. And in this case, uh, up at Scofield Barracks, there there's a special organization that reaches out all year long to uh, Gold Star family members. They've got luncheons throughout the year and even uh, spend months ahead of time preparing for the canoe race as a healing event itself. That do, It's just not the day of the event, but it's a full engagement throughout the year. Uh, you know, you, you'll see it, it, it. We've got a couple of pictures that we can post as well, but the canoe regatta was posted on the field. It has all of the 
uh, family members who had departed, who got boots laid out with the picture, and even all the kids who canoed in the regatta, even old guys like myself as a Gold Star family member. Picture of my dad was on the back of the shirt. We were just proud to, to be able to row in honor of them. And then we just had a huge healing event as part of the event. Do we have those pictures? We do. I send a copy. Uh, okay, we, in, we're seeing them now. Why don't you describe them for us? I see a poster. Yes, August 27th this year. Um, it's a very, very appealing poster. Can you talk about the poster? Uh, the poster itself was just the event itself. I sent another newsletter that is just being released on the Army um, on the Army magazine, and it shows several pictures of the canoe itself, the groups themselves, the blessings that was occurred coming from the water, blessing the people who participated, shows a lot of the race directors, and then some activities in the water itself that talks about the event. You mentioned a moment ago um, that you are uh, a wounded warrior or have a wounded warrior in your family. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a son of a deceased naval officer who was lost at sea in 1962 uh, when I was four years old. And uh, I'm a proud Navy. You know, my, my mom, with four children at the time, married another naval aviator and who I, who I call, you know, proudly dad. And they raised us five kids. And uh, it's, again, I'm just, I'm just one. I'm, I'm not really here to talk about that aspect, but it's really talking about the regatta itself. But I'm just proud as well to be a Gold Star recipient as well. Yeah, really important. So, Paul, is the one in Hawaii unique? Uh, are there other such regattas elsewhere, other such activities, such, such um, you know, um, events in other states and cities, or is this the only one? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not aware of any others, Jay. That doesn't mean they're not, but as far as through the Army Association or any of the, not, the other uh, military organizations, I'm not aware of any that, that are hosted in this type of format where it's you yeah. know getting them together and collaborating and getting them on the ocean. Uh, I'm not aware of any others. Yeah. Should there be? I mean, the, we have wounded warriors and Gold Star families yeah. all around the country. You know? Yeah, Jay, and I think it the events that they do is based on the uniqueness of where they are hosting the event. Like, you know, growing up in Texas, there is a huge hunting event that the Wounded Warrior Project puts on and sponsors. You know, the canoe regatta we had a couple of years ago, we had paddlers from Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, that Wounded Warrior Project sponsored and brought to the event. And so I, I just think, depending on where you live, we just chose the regatta to support wounded wars since we're here in Hawaii. You know, we're we're in a different time uh, with respect to veterans, especially veterans who gave the ultimate sacrifice and veterans who were seriously wounded too. Um, and uh, we have to we have to look at that as a, as a change in the way the military works, the military careers work. Um, the relationship of the members and their families with the civilian community and the government. Um, and it strikes me that this is part um, of that change. This is part of an effort to fill, fill the gap, fill the void. Uh, Paul, do you have any thoughts along those lines? Well, yeah, and I think, you know, there's often a lot of uh, poor publicity or bad publicity uh, regarding what the communities are doing, whether they're taking advantage of our military. And, and really, this is a way to bring the mission of, for example, the United States uh, the Association of the United States Army is educate, inform, and connect. So we're educating our community, our civilian community. We're informing them of what is happening in our military and we're connecting them. And that meets all three mission statements of our Association of the United States Army in one event. I mean, it literally does all three of those. So that is the value of what Association of the United States Army does in Hawaii and around the country. I don't, we, we've got 200 of such chapters around the United States in every state and, and across uh, Europe and into Asia. And the mission is to educate, inform, and connect. Yeah, I wanted to just expand on that. The, uh, the Associated United States Army, again, a 501c3 organization, we're about 270,000 members in 121 chapters across nine regions. 
I happen to be in my volunteer capacity, the ninth region president that covers Japan, Korea, Alaska, and Hawaii. And so I'm one of nine uh, region presidents, again, as a volunteer individual. But really the, the focus of, of AUSA, they're really the voice of the army focused on our soldiers and their families and honor those who have served. And so there's a huge effort to educate Congress on the needs of the army through the government affairs organizations that we have, a lot of job fairs, scholarship opportunities, some world renowned publications like the Army Magazine, and then a huge sponsor of the Army Museum that just stood up in Fort Belvoir, where AOSA is the prime sponsor to make sure that the Army finally had a museum, you know, finally having a museum. We haven't had one. Uh, we're, we're like the last service to have a museum. So we're proud to have a museum at Fort Belvoir now. You, you mentioned that uh, some of the some of the purpose here is to educate Congress uh, without without uh, commenting on whether Congress is educable. Uh, the question is, uh, <laughs> stop that ball. <laughs> uh, the question is whether it works, uh, whether you're able yeah. to reach Congress, because we all know that veterans could use some more funding. Uh, are they getting more funding? And if not, what? What kind of funding, what kind of programs would be helpful? Um, not just for this regatta, but for, you know, helping wounded warriors. Yep. And, uh, you know, we hear stories about uh, homeless wounded warriors. It touches my heart every time I hear such a story. And, uh, and of course, the families of the decedent warriors. So uh, what else can Congress do for your constituency? There's a large effort through what we call the Resolutions Committee that AOSA engages with Congress. And I think a big part is numbers matter. When when we're over 250,000 members, we do get a, a voice at the table. We, we expect to grow that number to almost a million people by the end of next year to have a what's going to be brought out in October to be a member of AOSA at the basic level is literally going to be free. It will provide some opportunities, it provides some discounts, but Congress has worked very closely with the Army. The Army can't you know, lobby to Congress directly, but us as an association can educate Congress on the needs of the military, what kind of uh, equipment that they need, what the families need, you know, what the community support needs. You're talking about what we can do to support veterans, retirees, we're trying to improve um, military construction projects. So there's about 12 major resolutions that we fight for every year. And we've been successful on getting many of those approved through the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, several years ago, even the ability to go to college was not going to be funded by the services, but through the agencies like uh, AUSA, we were able to get that overturned. And now individual soldiers have the opportunity to go to college funded by uh, by the Army that had previously about ready to, to go away. Oh, that's great. That's important. I mean, we're, we're trying to uh, recruit. We're trying to make um, men and women in uniform feel that this is a worthy career. And we're trying to motivate them, incentivize them, do a better job. All this means something. Uh, you know, when I was in the Coast Guard, Paul, um, we had a a post a Coast Guard organization that took care of the families uh, while the members were at sea. And sometimes those Coast Guard trips lasted for months. Um, and, you know, the families had the stress of not having their uh, husband or wife around. Um, and so this organization did raise money. This organization had events. This organization gave whatever, you know, support they could. Um, to the wives, the families of, of the Coast Guard people who were at sea. Um, does the regatta do that? In other words, if I went to look at who's on those boats, uh, would, I, would I also see the families of active duty service people who were not yeah. wounded and who are still yeah. alive and in the service? You had an answer on that, Ben? I'm going yeah. to let Paul answer it in his own way, by the yeah, way. Yeah, so of the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still an, a, um, a, an Army civilian after I retired, so I've been an Army civilian for about 13 years, so I can speak on behalf of the Army a little bit more specifically, but out of the 60-plus teams, 40 were veterans, active duty veterans from across the services, 
and their families were allowed to compete as part of the, the race itself. About 25 were wounded warriors and Gold Star families. So to answer your question, absolutely. The Guard, the Reserves, the Active Duty, we're an army of one. We even had local high school teams competing as part of their junior ROTC program and the college program. And so it was literally open to all that wanted to participate and support the need of the canoe regatta. And like Paul said, it's not the money for that one event. It's what the chapter does. And that's just one of the events that their chapter does to take care of soldiers and their families. Yep. Yep. Did I hear you say we are an army of one? Absolutely. What, is, what does that mean? That means the reserves, the National Guard, and the active duty. For years, they had been treated separately. And it is, and we all recognize after Vietnam that we cannot exist by ourselves, that it takes a total team effort. And part of our logo is being the Army of One. And that means everybody to include their families. Paul, well, I wanted to give you an opportunity to rebut what, what Ben has said, uh, <laughs> or if you like to add to it. Uh, well, how much of what he said do you agree with? Well, first off, you never you never tell a recovering attorney that he has an opportunity for rebuttal because I don't know how long your show is. So we'll be going on for a while if you give me rebuttal time. But, but what Luke said is absolutely accurate. But again, it, it is not just one event that we do throughout the year. We as an association, the United you know, States Army, support our families and the soldiers throughout the year, whether it's deployments and redeployments, whether it's the soldier returning who was under quarantine in the barracks for 10, 15, 25 days, we provide food, we provide services, we provide uh, cell services, whether we lose somebody in the local community uh, to an accident, or when, you know, even when you look at things like when the Navy lost the off spray over in uh, Conway Marine Corps area uh, several years back, even if the Army Association supported because they are we are one team, we may be one army, as Luke said, but we are also in a, in a unique environment in Hawaii where we're the only place that I'm aware of where all five branches, there are six branches now with Space Force, are all situated within a 20 mile radius of each other. And so we have developed quite a collaboration with the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard to work together to serve all of our community and all of our, uh, our troops, family members throughout our year. So we take great pride in providing services that they may be lacking in some other area whether it be that deployment or redeployment, or whether it be just a, a need that when we heard of a, a soldier or their family was somehow uh, had a, a catastrophe in their life, we step in and try to fill that void. So that's where our donations really go. There is no money left in the coffers in the Association of the United States Army. Every year we're looking to provide services to our family members uh, who are left behind, as well as the, the, the service members while on island and when they're deployed. So it, it is a collaborative <clears throat> effort. And we do take care of our guard and reserve and we look at the army as one army, but we also look across the aisle. I mean, I'm constantly over at joint base, you know, uh, Pearl Harbor, Hickam. I'm over in, you know, Marine Corps base dealing with our counterparts there, whether it be the Navy League or the Air Force Association or the Marine Corps. So we work well together. And I think that really provides our community a better understanding of what the military is. So you don't have that issue of, well, we don't want them here in our backyard. They're, they're a blight on what we do. They're not, they're there to support and they provide thousands of hours of community service uh, that you would be amazed at how much the military step in to fill the voids, uh, what the community needs as well when they're, when they're asked. And so we, we, pride, we pride ourselves in trying being that connectivity between, that's why that educate form of connect, the connect part is really the glue, right? It's connecting them back yeah. to the community. Have, have you been in the service, Paul? Have you uh, had a service background? No, sir. Um, I, I have no military background. Uh, I did have my father, uh, who was a Marine, always a Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine. Uh, but he he had re, you know re, got out of the Marines before I was born. But I had no military training or background or, or any any step into a uniform. Uh, my my service has really been uh, as a community supporter of the military over the last you know, several you know decade and a half. Wow! So you do this for some patriotic motivation, is that it? I do it for the love of our country. I do it for the love of the sacrifices made by the military and their family and and uh, and great pride in seeing what they do for us. And and it's a way of giving back a little bit. It's a, it's it's not that not that sacrifice that they make every day. And I'm just grateful. You know, you really touched me in, in your remarks. Uh, I, mean, I think, you know, patriotism and 
service of the country and service of the military is so important. We can never, ever forget. They're willing to lay their lives down for us, and we should be appreciative to the nth degree about that. So who else is on your, you know, your board or your committee? Uh, it's not just the two of you, is it, Paul? No, no, we have a board, uh, like a lot of the nonprofit boards, we have uh, a board of uh, normal, you know, president, secretary, whatnot. And we have, of course, our community members, we have several vice presidents, so things, one a non-commissioned officer and soldier program. We have a young professionals, you know, uh, organization within it. We have family support. Uh, and so we have a board of about 23 people that are then regularly to help us push the mission forward. And then, of course, anyone who is a member of AUSA Hawaii is invited to any one of our quarterly board meetings uh, and, and can step in and fill any one of the, the gaps we have for volunteerism, whether it be simply showing up at a deployment or redeployment or, or doing a fun run or whatever. We, there's plenty of opportunity in all nonprofits and, and leadership is is only one portion of it. The volunteerism is really what makes up our strength. And for example, at this regatta, you had, we had 140 volunteers on the beach on the day of the regatta, and it lasted just from eight o'clock to 12 o'clock noon. And they were there from overnight the night before, making sure the canoes were stored and, and protected, the tents were protected, slept overnight on the beach, on the ground uh, to protect that. And these were volunteers. And then they stayed throughout the whole day and made sure that everybody was marshaled to the water safely, got in the canoes safely, and that everybody was following the, the safety protocols and the rules of the, uh, the Hollycoa Hotel, which was the gracious host that we've had now for the last 10 years or more. That's wonderful. That's commitment. That's yes, sir. fabulous. Yes, so, Ben, we talk about how things change. And certainly, um, you know, geopolitically, things are changing in the world today. Um, right now, we're not actively engaged in Iraq. We're not actively engaged in Afghanistan. Um, but that could change any moment. Uh, who knows what will happen in the next, uh, you know, few years or the next decade or two. And the military uh, right now, uh, there's not a lot of wounded in action people coming back or people being killed, um, you know, in, in engagements anywhere in the world right now. But that could change. And, and if you look at the geopolitics of the Pacific, uh, with a buildup, if you will, maybe that's too strong a term, but the, the buildup here in Hawaii, um, we are going to have more troops here. We are going to have more, mm, you know, more facilities here, and they may very well be involved in action. Uh, who knows? Anywhere from here to Indo, PACOM, Pacific, India, whatnot. Um, and so that seems to make it more. I hate to even think of this prospect, but it seems to make it more important that you guys continue this work. Um, and I wonder what your thoughts are about the future of the regatta, the organization, uh, the event, the, the healing that you do in light of the real possibility that there'll be more wounded and more casualties in the years to come. It, it's a uh, Jay actually a, a great point in Indo-Pacific region at large. We are the largest theater across DOD. In the Army, it's the largest theater army that exists uh, here in Hawaii. Where, as Paul mentioned, all the services are located here, and we have troops deployed uh, literally from the west coast of California all the way, you know, south, you know, to Korea and the Philippines and you know, uh, other location throughout the Pacific. It, it's not just about combat that we're in, when we talk about wounded, because there is a lot of training and events and activities that occur to prepare us for the ultimate um, event, which we hope we never have to do. But we've got to train in peacetime as if we were going to be prepared to fight in wartime. And so we do lose uh, service members uh, during our training events. As Paul mentioned, the Osprey event, we lost six Blackhawks years ago out on the North Shore doing some night, uh, some night training. But also we have this now challenge with suicide ideations and those things are going on uh, where they are affected, both their individual family members, as well as the service members themselves and you know, even their children. And so they're also part of our focus. It's not just about combat, but it's just about taking care of the individual. So then when we do need them, they're prepared and their mind is free and set 
uh, to do what they're being trained to do, and that's to fight and win our nation's wars. Yeah, right. So it's the incentivization. It's that notion of one army. It's that notion of coming together. It's it's the notion of having an abiding patriotism. Just because you're in the service doesn't mean you're patriotic. Uh, we that's have right. to we have to make that happen. Yeah. So uh, the um, Military Affairs uh, Council in the uh, Chamber of Commerce. What is your connection with them? Did they did, were they involved yeah. at the founding in uh, 2014 or what? Yeah, we they had they are not part of um, specifically the regatta itself, even though we have had members of the Military Affairs Council uh, community partners sponsor and support. We are a member of the MAC as as the Hawaii chapter of AOSA and uh, as part of the chamber itself, and the and our organization is part of the chamber. So it's like we support each other, and so they are a great. Uh, source to, communi to communicate to the community the needs of the services. We're going through a huge effort as it relates to training land acquisition. Mm -hmm. All of the services, uh, lands, leases that we have all expire in 2029, and we need everyone's help and support to ensure that we retain the lands that we need to ensure that we can conduct the training that's required. And the biggest, uh, obviously, is out at Pulakalua training area, on the, on the big island or on the island of Hawaii. Uh, we need to retain that land to be able to fire the types of weapon systems that we have in, the, in our entire arsenal. So the MAC's involved, the local native Hawaiian communities are involved. We have many town hall sessions with the local community to get them to be part of the efforts to ensure they understand how we support them, but more importantly, how they support us as well. Mm. Did you know, Paul, that um... Uh, Nakoa is the 100th most popular name in Hawaii, and uh, that it applies to both women and men. And for that matter, it is often used on the mainland. So as you picked a very popular name, uh, I want to uh, <clears throat> I want to ask you guys to uh, provide the takeaways um, for our viewers. Uh, if there's uh, one uh, thought that you would like to leave with them about this program, the regatta and the organization and its relevance. And mission, um, could you could you tell them what you feel that might be, so that hopefully they will remember, um, you know the, remember what we have discussed today. Paul, you first. Yeah, thank you, sir. I think the mission that we have as AUSA, even with the regatta, is simply those three things that I keep coming back to: help us to educate, inform, and connect uh, people you may know in the community. And the way you can do that is get involved with AUSA Hawaii. You go to AUSA.org, find the Hawaii chapter, go to AUSA.org backslash Hawaii, go to Google, you know, Nakoa Regatta, and you can make a donation, of course, but more importantly than your dollars, I think it's your time and your talents, right? If you can bring your time, your volunteers, your talent, whatever that talent might be, because we're not, you know, able to cover all aspects of what is needed throughout our military and our families, bring your time and your talent. And your treasures, whatever that treasure could be, it could be an in-kind donation, it could be an actual cash donation. But if you bring those three things to the table, we will swell beyond belief of this organization. And, and you'll be blessed beyond you could even imagine by bringing that to the table. Bring your time, bring the things that you're good at. And, and Ben, your thoughts that you want to leave with people. What would you like them yeah. to remember about this event, the regatta, you know, the, uh, the effort of the military to put it together, uh, the people who are involved? And can I... Can I bring my boat down? Can I can I enter my boat in the regatta? I think the short answer is we can work around anything, but we can definitely get you in a canoe next year. So we'll make sure that you're invited, be part of the event. Uh, and I think just to add what Paul said, we are all volunteers and we can't do it without support of the volunteers, but more importantly, our community partners and businesses and industry who helps provide the funds so we are allowed to do something to take care of our soldiers and our family members. And a lot of the, it's hard to say no, can you support Wounded Warriors? For someone to tell me no, I would have a hard time with that. However, um, it, 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 again, it is a team sport, but they're, like Paul said, you know, just the event we had at Red Hill, we provided donations to the MWR organization funds of about $10,000 that we gave as a chapter uh, to make sure that the families who were displaced from December to April had food vouchers, had their transportation needs that they needed until they were you know, ready to go back in April 
uh, you know, back to Red Hill. But I would say everyone has a passion. If there's something that is unique to them that they would like to do to support the chapter, we can create any vice president title that we want to. Oh, you, we've got one individual who does who does nothing but support ROTCs at the high school and college level. That's all he wants to do. And so we just let him do it. You know, we, years ago, Matt McCarville helped us with the Wounded Warrior Canoe Regatta. He said, hey, I'm here. I just moved from New Jersey. What can I do to help? I've got a passion for Wounded Warriors. And I said, great. You're now our vice president for Wounded Warrior Program. So he kind of kickstarted the, the Renew Regatta, or the Canoe Regatta for the white chapter. And it is where it is today because the initial efforts of Paul and Penny and Matt and others to make that a great event. So I think your imagination is your only limitation. And we, we just enjoy everyone's support and we just get excited when we do events. Yeah, come out to the cornhole tournament. It was a great event that we had, oh, you know, over on uh, Soldiers Field over here at Schofield Barracks. Soldiers love to play cornhole. So do we. So again, someone came up with that idea. It was a great event. It was a membership opportunity to grow new members and to get the community involved with the, you know, with the leaders of our army uh, and just meet and greet great family members uh, and individual soldiers. So put a soldier in front of a camera, you'll hear a great story as opposed to from an old fart like me who, you know, retired in 2010. But I still have a passion for soldiers. My kids are all serving in, in military in some capacity, but uh, we're excited to be, just get involved as a local chapter or be part of a local community. And if you're a business owner and you want a place to help reach and support soldiers and their families, we're all about helping each other to support ourselves. Thank you, Ben. Ben Luke Farr. Um, Paul, um, I, I don't think it needs a rebuttal, if you don't mind, um, but I want to thank you both, Paul Lequie and uh, Ben Lutfar, for this discussion and for helping us understand the event and why and where and, and what it is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.